Remember that a planar graph is a graph that can be drawn in the plane without any edges crossing over each other. And a plane graph is an example of such a drawing in the plane, where we don't have any edge crossings. So here let's draw an example of a plane graph. We'll also mark off the four regions that it creates and call them R1, R2, R3, and R4. Next we want to take a look at how many vertices, edges, and regions it has. We already saw that it has four regions. So in this example, we have seven vertices and nine edges and four regions. Now you may notice that if you take the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions, you get two. Okay, well let's try another example. This green plane graph has seven vertices, eight edges, and three regions. And again we notice that the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions equals two. This is not just a coincidence. It actually holds for every connected plane graph. So the theorem that we want to prove is that if G is a connected plane graph with n vertices, m edges and r regions, then n minus m plus r is equal to 2. This is actually known as Euler's formula for plane graphs. Euler has a lot of formulas for different areas of mathematics, but remember that he actually created the area of mathematics known as graph theory. We've seen that this theorem works for these two examples, but now we want to try to figure out how to prove it in general. The proof will use induction on m, the number of edges. The base case is just when m equals zero. So you have a connected plane graph on no edges. That means the graph must be k1, just the isolated vertex. So that means that n is equal to one, we know m is zero, and r, the number of regions, is just one. Well, clearly one minus zero plus one equals two. So the base case is done. Next, we make the inductive hypothesis. Suppose that the theorem is true for all connected plane graphs with fewer than m edges, where m is something bigger than or equal to one. Next, we need to use the inductive hypothesis to show that the theorem will have to hold for any connected plane graph on m edges. So let's start by letting G be a connected plane graph on M edges. And let's say it has N vertices and R regions. Our proof now divides up into two cases, depending on whether or not our graph G is a tree. Remember that a graph is a tree if it is connected and acyclic. That means that it's connected and has no cycle. If you want a review about graphs which are trees, check the links in the description below for videos all about trees. Our first case to consider is the case if G is a tree. Well, that will tell us that M is equal to N minus one. And the proof of this can be found in a previous video. So check the links in the description below. Now we know the number of edges it has. Also notice that there will be exactly one region that's because when you draw a tree, having no cycle means that no region is closed off. So the only region is the exterior unbounded region. So in this case, n minus m plus r is just equal to n minus n minus one plus one, and we get two. So if g is a tree, then we're done. We know that it'll work. Next, we look at the case where g is not a tree. We already know that G is a connected graph. So if G is connected, but not a tree, then G must, by definition, have a cycle, C. Now we'll let E be an edge on our cycle C. Now, our aim is to remove that edge E and apply the inductive hypothesis to the smaller graph G without E. We need to be careful of one thing though. If we remove the edge E, we need to make sure that we don't disconnect the graph because the inductive hypothesis only works on connected plane graphs. So think about E. If removing E will disconnect our connected graph, then E would be what's called a bridge edge. But we've seen in the video about bridge edges that an edge is a bridge if and only if it lies on no cycle. However, E clearly lies on a cycle. We took it to belong to the cycle C. 
That tells us that E is not a bridge edge. And therefore, the graph without the edge E is still connected. Of course, it's still planar as well. And it has N vertices, M minus one edges, and R minus one regions. To see why this is, let's take a look at a very small example. Here I'm drawing a plane graph which has a few cycles in it. So we're in this case. And I'll highlight a particular cycle and call that C. Next I'll highlight some edge of that cycle, call that E. And you can clearly see that if you were to remove that edge, you're not going to disconnect the graph. Also, of course, the graph stays planar. Now notice, of course, you've removed an edge, so the number of edges goes down by one. The number of vertices stays. But look at what happens to the number of regions. Removing edge E means that in this example, R2 and R3 join into one region. And in general, removing an edge of a cycle in a plane graph will just decrease the number of regions by one. Thus, by the inductive hypothesis, the theorem holds for the graph G without E. Remember, G without E is connected and a plane graph and has fewer than M edges. So we know that its number of vertices minus its number of edges plus its number of regions must equal two. That's again by the inductive hypothesis. But if you simplify that, you'll see that N minus M plus R equals two. And therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, the theorem holds for all values of M bigger than or equal to zero. Thus, we know that a connected plane graph with N vertices M edges and R regions will satisfy the equation N minus M plus R equals two. And a proof is done, so we can put the square. So to recap, we know that a connected plane graph satisfies this equation. Well, what about a disconnected plane graph? This theorem actually does generalize, so it comes out as a corollary. If G is a plane graph with C of G connected components, then the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions just equals one plus the number of connected components. Let's take a look at a small example. So here I'll draw it. Notice that it has three connected components and I'll start to label the regions. You'll see that it has five regions. Now, the number of vertices in this graph is 12, the number of edges is 13, the number of regions is five. Of course, the number of connected components is three. So if you put this all together, you'll see that N minus M plus R is equal to four, which is clearly the same as one plus three. So the theorem does generalize to the disconnected case as well. Euler's formula is often talked about in the context of polyhedra. Here I'll draw a polyhedron, which happens to be a tetrahedron. And it has five vertices, and it has eight edges, and five faces. So we'll write V, E, and F for the number of vertices, edges, and faces. We can also draw a graph which looks like a bird's eye view of this tetrahedron. And that's the associated graph to that polyhedron. Notice that it has five vertices and eight edges and five regions. Notice that in this picture, the bottom of the tetrahedron corresponds to the region that is the exterior unbounded region in our plane graph. So in general, if V, E, and F are the number of vertices, edges, and faces in a polyhedron, then V minus E plus F is equal to two. This is known as Euler's polyhedron formula. It's actually a pretty famous formula, so now you know where it comes from. Click here for related videos and stay tuned for more new videos on graph theory topics. I'll see you there.